Genesis chapters 1 through 16 of the Bible Douay Rheims 1899 American Edition. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Ron Altman. Douay Rheims Bible, 1899 American Edition, translated by Gregory Martin and Richard Schelliner. Genesis, Chapter 1 In the beginning God created heaven and earth, and the earth was void and empty, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved over the waters. And God said, Be light made, and light was made. And God saw the light, that it was good, and he divided the light from the darkness. And he called the light day, and the darkness night, and there was evening and morning one day. And God said, Let there be a firmament made amidst the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made a firmament, and divided the waters that were under the firmament from those that were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and morning were the second day. God also said, Let the waters that are under the heaven be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so done. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And he said, Let the earth bring forth the green herb, and such as may seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, which may have seed in itself upon the earth. And it was so done. And the earth brought forth the green herb, and such as yieldeth seed according to its kind, and the tree that beareth fruit having seed each one according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, Let there be lights made in the firmament of heaven to divide the day and the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years to shine in the firmament of heaven, and to give light upon the earth. And it was so done. And God made two great lights, a greater light to rule the day, and a lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And he set them in the firmament of heaven to shine upon the earth, and to rule the day and the night, and to divide the light and the darkness and God saw that it was good, and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. God also said, Let the waters bring forth the creeping creature having life, and the fowl that may fly over the earth under the firmament of heaven. And God created the great whales, and every living and moving creature which the waters brought forth according to their kinds, and every winged fowl according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And he blessed them, saying, Increase and multiply, and fill the waters of the sea, and let the birds be multiplied upon the earth. And the evening and morning were the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature in its kind, cattle and creeping things, and beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and it was so done. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and cattle, and every living thing that creepeth on the earth after its kind, and God saw that it was good. And he said, Let us make man to our image and likeness, and let him have dominion over the fishes of the sea, and the fowls of the air, and the beasts, and the whole earth, and every creeping creature that moveth upon the earth. And God created man to his own image, 
to the image of god he created him male and female he created them and god blessed them saying increase and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and rule over the fishes of the sea and the fowls of the air and all living creatures that move upon the earth and god said behold i have given you every herb bearing seed upon the earth and all trees that have in themselves seed of their own kind to be your meat and to all beasts of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to all that move upon the earth and wherein there is life that they may have to feed upon and it was so done and god saw all the things that he had made and they were very good and the evening and the morning were the sixth day end of chapter one chapter two so the heavens and the earth were finished and all the furniture of them and on the seventh day god ended his work which he had made and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done and he blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he had rested from all his work which god created and made these are the generations of the heaven and the earth when they were created in the day that the lord god made the heaven and the earth and every plant of the field before it sprung up in the earth and every herb of the ground before it grew for the lord god had not rained upon the earth and there was not a man to till the earth but a spring rose out of the earth watering all the surface of the earth and the lord god formed man of the slime of the earth and breathed into his face the breath of life and man became a living soul and the lord god had planted a paradise of pleasure from the beginning wherein he placed man whom he had formed and the lord god brought forth of the ground all manner of trees fair to behold and pleasant to eat of the tree of life also in the midst of paradise and the tree of knowledge of good and evil and a river went out of the place of pleasure to water paradise which from thence is divided into four heads the name of the one is phison that is it which compasseth all the land of Hevaleth where gold groweth and the gold of that land is very good there is found delium and the onyx stone and the name of the second river is gion the same is it that compasseth all the land of ethiopia and the name of the third river is tigris the same passeth along by the assyrians and the fourth river is euphrates and the lord god took man and put him into the paradise of pleasure to dress it and to keep it and he commanded him saying of every tree of paradise thou shalt eat but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat for in what day soever thou shalt eat of it thou shalt die the death and the lord god said it is not good for man to be alone let us make him a help like unto himself and the lord god having formed out of the ground all the beasts of the earth and all the fowls of the air brought them to adam to see what he would call them for whatsoever adam called any living creature the same is its name and adam called all the beasts by their names and all the fowls of the air and all the cattle of the field but for adam there was not found a helper like himself then the lord god cast a deep sleep upon adam and when he was fast asleep he took one of his ribs and filled up flesh for it and the lord god built the rib which he took from adam into a woman and brought her to adam and adam said 
This now is bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Wherefore a man shall leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they shall be two in one flesh. And they were both naked, to wit, Adam and his wife, and were not ashamed. End of chapter 2 Chapter 3 Now the serpent was more subtle than any of the beasts of the earth which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Why hath God commanded you that you should not eat of every tree of paradise? And the woman answered him, saying, Of the fruit of the trees that are in paradise we do eat. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of paradise, God hath commanded us that we should not eat, and that we should not touch it, lest perhaps we die. And the serpent said to the woman, No, you shall not die the death. For God doth know that in what day soever you shall eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And the woman saw that the tree was good to eat, and fair to the eyes, and delightful to behold. And she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave to her husband, who did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and when they perceived themselves to be naked, they sewed together fig-leaves, and made themselves aprons. And when they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in paradise at the afternoon air, Adam and his wife hid themselves from the face of the Lord God amidst the trees of paradise. And the Lord God called Adam, and said to him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in paradise, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said to him, And who hath told thee that thou wast naked, but that thou hast eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldst not eat? And Adam said, The woman whom thou gavest me to be my companion gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said to the woman, Why hast thou done this? And she answered, The serpent deceived me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said to the serpent, Because thou hast done this thing, thou art cursed among all cattle and beasts of the earth. Upon thy breast shalt thou go, and earth shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. I will put enmities between thee and the woman, and thy seed and her seed. She shall crush thy head, and thou shalt lie in wait for her heel. To the woman also he said, I will multiply thy sorrows and thy conceptions. In sorrow shalt thou bring forth children, and thou shalt be under thy husband's power, and he shall have dominion over thee. And to Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened to the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldst not eat, cursed is the earth in thy work. With labor and toil shalt thou eat thereof all the days of thy life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herbs of the earth. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return to the earth, out of which thou wast taken. For dust thou art, and into dust thou shalt return. And Adam called the name of his wife Eve, because she was the mother of all the living. And the Lord God made for Adam and his wife garments of skins, and clothed them. And he said, Behold, Adam is become as one of us, knowing good and evil. Now therefore, lest perhaps he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat and live for ever. And the Lord God sent him out of the paradise of pleasure, 
to till the earth from which he was taken. And he cast out Adam, and placed before the paradise of pleasure cherubims, and a flaming sword turning every way to keep the way of the tree of life. End of chapter 3 Chapter 4 And Adam knew Eve his wife, who conceived, and brought forth Cain, saying, I have gotten a man through God. And again she brought forth his brother Abel, and Abel was a shepherd, and Cain a husbandman. And it came to pass after many days, that Cain offered of the fruits of the earth gifts to the Lord. Abel also offered of the firstlings of his flock, and of their fat, and the Lord had respect to Abel and to his offerings. But to Cain and his offerings he had no respect, and Cain was exceedingly angry, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said to him, Why art thou angry, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou do well, shalt thou not receive? But if ill, shall not sin forthwith be present at the door? but the lust thereof shall be under thee, and thou shalt have dominion over it. And Cain said to Abel his brother, Let us go forth abroad. And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel, and slew him. And the Lord said to Cain, Where is thy brother Abel? And he answered, I know not, am I my brother's keeper? And he said to him, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth to me from the earth. Now therefore cursed shalt thou be upon the earth, which hath opened her mouth, and received the blood of thy brother at thy hand. When thou shalt till it, it shall not yield to thee its fruit. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be upon the earth. And Cain said to the Lord, My iniquity is greater than that I may deserve pardon. Behold, thou dost cast me out this day from the face of the earth, and I shall be hidden from thy face, and I shall be a vagabond and a fugitive on the earth. Every one therefore that findeth me shall kill me. And the Lord said to him, No, it shall not be so, but whosoever shall kill Cain, shall be punished sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, that whosoever found him should not kill him. And Cain went out from the face of the Lord, and dwelt as a fugitive on the earth at the east side of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived, and brought forth Henoch. And he built a city, and called the name thereof by the name of his son, Henoch. And Henoch begot Irad, and Irad begot Maviel, and Maviel begot Methusiel, and Methusiel begot Lamech, who took two wives, the name of the one was Ada, and the name of the other Selah. And Ada brought forth Jabel, who was the father of such as dwell in tents, and of herdsmen, and his brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of them that play upon the harp and the organs. Selah also brought forth Tubalcain, who was a hammerer and artificer in every work of brass and iron. And the sister of Tubalcain was Noema. And Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Selah, Hear my voice, ye wives of Lamech, hearken to my speech for I have slain a man to the wounding of myself, and a stripling to my own bruising. Sevenfold vengeance shall be taken for Cain, but for Lamech seventy times sevenfold. Adam also knew his wife again, and she brought forth a son, and called his name Seth, saying, God hath given me another seed for Abel, whom Cain slew. But to Seth also was born a son, whom he called Enos. This man began to call upon the name of the Lord. End of chapter 4
Chapter 5 This is the book of the generation of Adam. In the day that God created man, he made him to the likeness of God. He created them male and female, and blessed them, and called their name Adam, in the day when they were created. And Adam lived a hundred and thirty years, and begot a son to his own image and likeness, and called his name Seth. And the days of Adam after he begot Seth were eight hundred years, and he begot sons and daughters. And all the time that Adam lived came to nine hundred and thirty years, and he died. Seth also lived a hundred and five years, and begot Enos. And Seth lived after he begot Enos eight hundred and seven years, and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Seth were nine hundred and twelve years, and he died. And Enos lived ninety years, and begot Canaan, after whose birth he lived eight hundred and fifteen years, and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Enos were nine hundred and five years, and he died. And Canaan lived seventy years, and begot Malaliel. And Canaan lived, after he begot Malaliel, eight hundred and forty years, and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Canaan were nine hundred and ten years, and he died. And Malaliel lived sixty-five years, and begot Jared. And Malaliel lived, after he begot Jared, eight hundred and thirty years, and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Malaliel were eight hundred and ninety-five years, and he died. And Jared lived a hundred and sixty-two years, and begot Henoch. And Jared lived, after he begot Henoch, eight hundred years, and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Jared were nine hundred and sixty-two years, and he died. And Henoch lived sixty-five years, and begot Methuselah. And Henoch walked with God, and lived after he begot Methuselah three hundred years, and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Henoch were three hundred and sixty-five years. And he walked with God, and was seen no more, because God took him. And Methuselah lived a hundred and eighty-seven years, and begot Lamech. And Methuselah lived, after he begot Lamech, seven hundred and eighty-two years, and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Methuselah were nine hundred and sixty-nine years, and he died. And Lamech lived a hundred and eighty-two years, and begot a son, and he called his name Noe, saying, This same shall comfort us from the works and labors of our hands on the earth which the Lord hath cursed. And Lamech lived, after he begot Noe, five hundred and ninety-five years, and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Lamech came to seven hundred and seventy-seven years, and he died. And Noe, when he was five hundred years old, begot Sem, Cam, and Japheth. End of chapter 5 Chapter 6 And after that, Men began to be multiplied upon the earth, and daughters were born to them. The sons of God, seeing the daughters of men, that they were fair, took to themselves wives of all which they chose. And God said, My spirit shall not remain in man for ever, because he is flesh, and his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. Now giants were upon the earth in those days. For after the sons of God went in to the daughters of men, and they brought forth children, these are the mighty men of old, men of renown. And God, seeing that the wickedness of men was great on the earth, and that all the thought of their heart was bent upon evil at all times, 
it repented him that he had made man on the earth and being touched inwardly with sorrow of heart he said i will destroy man whom i have created from the face of the earth from man even to beasts from the creeping thing even to the fowls of the air for it repenteth me that i have made them but noe found grace before the lord these are the generations of noe noe was a just and perfect man in his generations he walked with god and he begot three sons sem cam and japheth and the earth was corrupted before god and was filled with iniquity and when god had seen that the earth was corrupted for all flesh had corrupted its way upon the earth he said to noe the end of all flesh is come before me the earth is filled with iniquity through them and i will destroy them with the earth make thee an ark of timber planks thou shalt make little rooms in the ark and thou shalt pitch it within and without and thus shalt thou make it the length of the ark shall be three hundred cubits the breadth of it fifty cubits and the height of it thirty cubits thou shalt make a window in the ark and in a cubit shalt thou finish the top of it and the door of the ark thou shalt set in the side with lower middle chambers and third stories shalt thou make it behold i will bring the waters of a great flood upon the earth to destroy all flesh wherein is the breath of life under heaven all things that are in the earth shall be consumed and i will establish my covenant with thee and thou shalt enter into the ark thou and thy sons and thy wife and the wives of thy sons with thee and of every living creature of all flesh thou shalt bring two of a sort into the ark that they may live with thee of the male sex and the female of fowls according to their kind and of beasts in their kind and of every thing that creepeth on the earth according to its kind two of every sort shall go in with thee that they may live thou shalt take unto thee of all food that may be eaten and thou shalt lay it up with thee and it shall be food for thee and them and noe did all things which god commanded him end of chapter six chapter seven and the lord said to him go in thou and all thy house into the ark for thee i have seen just before me in this generation of all clean beasts take seven and seven the male and the female but of the beasts that are unclean two and two the male and the female of the fowls also of the air seven and seven the male and the female that seed may be saved upon the face of the whole earth for yet a while and after seven days i will reign upon the earth forty days and forty nights and i will destroy every substance that i have made from the face of the earth and noe did all things which the lord had commanded him and he was six hundred years old when the waters of the flood overflowed the earth and noe went in and his sons his wife and the wives of his sons with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood and of beasts clean and unclean and of fowls and of every thing that moveth upon the earth two and two went into noe into the ark male and female as the lord had commanded noe and after the seven days were past the waters of the flood overflowed the earth in the six hundredth year of the life of noe in the second month in the seventeenth day of the month all the fountains of the great deep were broken up and the floodgates of heaven were opened and the rain fell upon the earth forty days and forty nights 
in the selfsame day noe and sem and cam and japheth his sons his wife and the three wives of his sons with them went into the ark they and every beast according to its kind and all the cattle in their kind and every thing that moveth upon the earth according to its kind and every fowl according to its kind all birds and all that fly went into noe into the ark two and two of all flesh wherein was the breath of life and they that went in went in male and female of all flesh as god had commanded him and the lord shut him in on the outside and the flood was forty days upon the earth and the waters increased and lifted up the ark on high from the earth for they overflowed exceedingly and filled all on the face of the earth and the ark was carried upon the waters and the waters prevailed beyond measure upon the earth and all the high mountains under the whole heaven were covered the water was fifteen cubits higher than the mountains which it covered and all flesh was destroyed that moved upon the earth both of fowl and of cattle and of beasts and of all creeping things that creep upon the earth and all men and all things wherein there is the breath of life on the earth died and he destroyed all the substance that was upon the earth from man even to beast and the creeping things and fowls of the air and they were destroyed from the earth and noe only remained and they that were with him in the ark and the waters prevailed upon the earth a hundred and fifty days End of chapter 7 Chapter 8 And God remembered Noe, and all the living creatures, and all the cattle which were with him in the ark, and brought a wind upon the earth, and the waters were abated. The fountains also of the deep, and the floodgates of heaven were shut up, and the rain from heaven was restrained and the waters returned from off the earth going and coming and they began to be abated after a hundred and fifty days and the ark rested in the seventh month the seven and twentieth day of the month upon the mountains of armenia and the waters were going and decreasing until the tenth month for in the tenth month the first day of the month the tops of the mountains appeared. And after that forty days were passed, Noe, opening the window of the ark which he had made, sent forth a raven, which went forth and did not return, till the waters were dried up upon the earth. He sent forth also a dove after him, to see if the waters had now ceased upon the face of the earth, but she, not finding where her foot might rest, returned to him into the ark, for the waters were upon the whole earth, and he put forth his hand and caught her, and brought her into the ark. And having waited yet seven other days, he again sent forth the dove out of the ark, and she came to him in the evening, carrying a bough of an olive tree with green leaves in her mouth. Noe therefore understood that the waters were ceased upon the earth. And he stayed yet other seven days, and he sent forth the dove, which returned not any more unto him. Therefore in the six hundredth and first year, the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were lessened upon the earth, and Noe opening the covering of the ark looked and saw that the face of the earth was dried. In the second month, the seven and twentieth day of the month, the earth was dried. And God spoke to Noe, saying, Go out of the ark, thou and thy wife, thy sons, and the wives of thy sons with thee, all living things that are with thee of all flesh, as well in fowls as in beasts, and all creeping things 
that creep upon the earth bring out with thee, and go ye upon the earth, increase and multiply upon it. So Noe went out, he and his sons, his wife and the wives of his sons with him, and all living things and cattle and creeping things that creep upon the earth according to their kinds went out of the ark. And Noe built an altar unto the Lord, and taking of all cattle and fowls that were clean, offered holocausts upon the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savour, and said, I will no more curse the earth for the sake of man. For the imagination and thought of man's heart are prone to evil from his youth, Therefore I will no more destroy every living soul, as I have done. All the days of the earth, seed-time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, night and day, shall not cease. End of chapter 8 Chapter 9 And God blessed Noe and his sons, and he said to them, Increase and multiply, and fill the earth, and let the fear and dread of you be upon all the beasts of the earth, and upon all the fowls of the air, and all that move upon the earth. All the fishes of the sea are delivered into your hand, and every thing that moveth and liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herbs have I delivered them all to you saving that flesh with blood you shall not eat. For I will require the blood of your lives at the hand of every beast, and at the hand of man, at the hand of every man, and of his brother will I require the life of man. Whosoever shall shed man's blood, his blood shall be shed, for man was made to the image of God. But increase you, and multiply, and go upon the earth, and fill it. Thus also said God to Noe, and to his sons with him, Behold, I will establish my covenant with you, and with your seed after you, and with every living soul that is with you, as well in all birds as in cattle and beasts of the earth, that are come forth out of the ark, and in all the beasts of the earth I will establish my covenant with you, and all flesh shall be no more destroyed with the waters of a flood, neither shall there be from henceforth a flood to waste the earth. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant which I give between me and you, and to every living soul that is with you, for perpetual generations. I will set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be the sign of a covenant between me and between the earth. And when I shall cover the sky with clouds, my bow shall appear in the clouds. And I will remember my covenant with you, and with every living soul that beareth flesh. And there shall no more be waters of a flood, to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the clouds, and I shall see it, and shall remember the everlasting covenant that was made between God and every living soul of all flesh which is upon the earth. And God said to Noe, This shall be the sign of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh upon the earth. And the sons of Noe who came out of the ark were Sem, Cam, and Japheth, and Cam is the father of Canaan. These three are the sons of Noe, and from these was all mankind spread over the whole earth. And Noe, a husbandman, began to till the ground, and planted a vineyard, and drinking of the wine was made drunk, and was uncovered in his tent which when Cam the father of Canaan had seen, to wit, that his father's nakedness was uncovered, he told it to his two brethren without. But Sem and Japheth put a cloak 
upon their shoulders and going backward covered the nakedness of their father and their faces were turned away and they saw not their father's nakedness and noi awaking from the wine when he had learned what his younger son had done to him he said cursed be canaan a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren and he said blessed be the lord god of sem be canaan his servant may god enlarge japheth and may he dwell in the tents of sem and canaan be his servant and noe lived after the flood three hundred and fifty years and all his days were in the whole nine hundred and fifty years and he died End of chapter 9 Chapter 10 These are the generations of the sons of Noi, Sem, Cam, and Japheth, and unto them sons were born after the flood. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, and Magog, and Madai, and Javan, and Tubal, and Mosok, and Theras, and the sons of Gomer, Askenaz, and Riphath, and Thogorma, and the sons of Javan, Elisa, and Tharsus, Kethim, and Dodanim. By these were divided the islands of the Gentiles in their lands, every one according to his tongue and their families in their nations. And the sons of Cam, Cus, and Mesram, and Futh, and Canaan, and the sons of Cus, Seba, and Hevela, and Sebata, and Regma, and Sebataka, the sons of Regma, Seba, and Dedan. Now Cus begot Nimrod, he began to be mighty on the earth. And he was a stout hunter before the Lord, hence came a proverb, even as Nimrod the stout hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babylon, and Iraq, and Akhad, and Kalane, in the land of Senear. Out of that land came forth Aser, and built Nineveh, and the streets of the city, and Kale. Reason also between Nineveh and Kale, this is the great city. And Mesraim begot Ludim, and Anamim, and Leabim, Nephuim, and Phetrusim, and Kesluim, of whom came forth the Philistines, and the Cathorim. And Canaan begot Sidon, his firstborn, the Hittite, and the Jebusite, and the Amorite, and the Gergesite, the Hevite, and the Erechite, the Sinite, and the Aradian, the Samarite, and the Hamathite, and afterwards the families of the Canaanites were spread abroad. And the limits of Canaan were from Sidon, as one comes to Gerera, even to Gaza, until thou enter Sodom and Gomorrah, and Adama and Seboim, even to Lisa. These are the children of Cam in their kindreds and tongues and generations and lands and nations. Of Sem also the father of all the children of Heber, the elder brother of Japheth, sons were born. The sons of Sem, Elam, and Azer, and Arphaxed, and Lud, and Aram. The sons of Aram, Us, and Hull, and Gether, and Mes. But Arphaxed begot Saleh, of whom was born Heber. And to Heber were born two sons. The name of the one was Phaleg, because in his days the earth was divided, and his brother's name was Jectan, which Jectan begot Elmadad, and Saleph, and Asermoth, Jare, and Aduram, and Uzel, and Dekla, and Ebal, and Abimael, Seba, and Ophir, and Havilah, and Jobab. All these were the sons of Jectan. And their dwelling was from Mesa, as we go on as far as Sephar, a mountain in the east. These are the children of Sem, according to their kindreds and tongues, 
and countries in their nations. These are the families of Noe, according to their peoples and nations. By these were the nations divided on the earth after the flood. End of chapter 10 Chapter 11 And the earth was of one tongue, and of the same speech. And when they removed from the east, they found a plain in the land of Senear, and dwelt in it. And each one said to his neighbor, Come, let us make brick, and bake them with fire. And they had brick instead of stones, and slime instead of mortar. And they said, Come, let us make a city and a tower, the top whereof may reach to heaven, and let us make our name famous before we be scattered abroad into all lands. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of Adam were building. And he said, Behold, it is one people, and all have one tongue, and they have begun to do this, neither will they leave off from their designs till they accomplish them indeed. Come ye, therefore, let us go down, and there confound their tongue, that they may not understand one another's speech. And so the Lord scattered them from that place into all lands, and they ceased to build the city. And therefore the name thereof was called Babel, because there the language of the whole earth was confounded, and from thence the Lord scattered them abroad upon the face of all countries. These are the generations of Sem. Sem was a hundred years old when he begot Arphaxad, two years after the flood. And Sem lived after he begot Arphaxad five hundred years and begot sons and daughters. And Arphaxad lived thirty-five years and begot Saleh. And Arphaxad lived after he begot Saleh three hundred and three years and begot sons and daughters. Saleh also lived thirty years and begot Heber. And Saleh lived after he begot Heber four hundred and three years and begot sons and daughters. And Heber lived thirty-four years and begot Phaleg. And Heber lived after he begot Phaleg four hundred and thirty years and begot sons and daughters. Phaleg also lived thirty years and begot Riu. And Phaleg lived after he begot Riu two hundred and nine years and begot sons and daughters. And Riu lived thirty-two years and begot Serug. And Riu lived after he begot Serug two hundred and seven years and begot sons and daughters. And Sarug lived thirty years and begot Nahor. And Sarug lived after he begot Nahor two hundred years and begot sons and daughters. And Nahor lived nine and twenty years and begot Thera. And Nahor lived after he begot Thera a hundred and nineteen years and begot sons and daughters. And Thera lived seventy years, and begot Abram, and Nahor, and Aran. And these are the generations of Thera. Thera begot Abram, Nahor, and Aran. And Aran begot Lot. And Aran died before Thera his father in the land of his nativity, in Ur of the Chaldees. And Abram and Nahor married wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife Melchah, the daughter of Aran, father of Melchah, and father of Jeska. And Sarai was barren, and had no children. And Therah took Abram his son, and Lot the son of Aran, his son's son, and Sarai his daughter-in-law, the wife of Abram his son, and brought them out of Ur of the Chaldees, to go into the land of Canaan. And they came as far as Haran, and dwelt there. And the days of Therah 
were two hundred and five years, and he died in Haran. End of chapter 11 Chapter 12 And the Lord said to Abram, Go forth out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and out of thy father's house, and come into the land which I shall show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and magnify thy name, and thou shalt be blessed. I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee, and in thee shall all the kindred of the earth be blessed. So Abram went out as the Lord had commanded him, and Lot went with him, Abram was seventy-five years old when he went forth from Haran. And he took Sarai his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all the substance which they had gathered, and the souls which they had gotten in Haran, and they went out to go into the land of Canaan. And when they were come into it, Abram passed through the country into the place of Sichem, as far as the noble vale, now the Canaanite was at that time in the land. And the Lord appeared to Abram, and said to him, To thy seed will I give this land. And he built there an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. And passing on from thence to a mountain that was on the east side of Bethel, he there pitched his tent, Having Bethel on the west, and high on the east, he built there also an altar to the Lord, and called upon his name. And Abram went forward, going and proceeding on to the south. And there came a famine in the country, and Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was very grievous in the land. And when he was near to enter into Egypt, he said to Sarai his wife, I know that thou art a beautiful woman, and that when the Egyptians shall see thee, they will say, She is his wife, and they will kill me and keep thee. Say therefore, I pray thee, that thou art my sister, that I may be well used for thee, and that my soul may live for thy sake. And when Abram was come into Egypt, the Egyptians saw the woman, that she was very beautiful. And the princes told Pharaoh, and praised her before him, and the woman was taken into the house of Pharaoh. And they used Abram well for her sake, and he had sheep and oxen and he-asses and men-servants and maid-servants and she-asses and camels. But the Lord scourged Pharaoh and his house with most grievous stripes for Sarai, Abram's wife. And Pharaoh called Abram and said to him, What is this that thou hast done to me? Why didst thou not tell me that she was thy wife? For what cause didst thou say she was thy sister, that I might take her to my wife? Now therefore, there is thy wife, take her, and go thy way. And Pharaoh gave his men orders concerning Abram, and they led him away, and his wife, and all that he had. End of chapter 12 Chapter 13 And Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and Lot with him, into the south. And he was very rich in possession of gold and silver, and he returned by the way that he came, from the south to Bethel, to the place where before he had pitched his tent between Bethel and Hai, in the place of the altar which he had made before, and there he called upon the name of the Lord. But Lot also, who was with Abram, had flocks of sheep, and herds of beasts, and tents. Neither was the land able to bear them, that they might dwell together, for their substance was great, and they could not dwell together. 
whereupon also there arose a strife between the herdsmen of Abram and of Lot. And at that time the Canaanite and the Pharisite dwelled in that country. Abram therefore said to Lot, Let there be no quarrel, I beseech thee, between me and thee, and between my herdsmen and thy herdsmen, for we are brethren. Behold, the whole land is before thee. Depart from me, I pray thee. If thou wilt go to the left hand, I will take the right. If thou choose the right hand, I will pass to the left. And Lot, lifting up his eyes, saw all the country about the Jordan, which was watered throughout, before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, as the paradise of the Lord, and like Egypt as one comes to Sigor. And Lot chose to himself the country about the Jordan, and he departed from the east, and they were separated one brother from the other. Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot abode in the towns that were about the Jordan, and dwelt in Sodom. And the men of Sodom were very wicked, and sinners before the face of the Lord beyond measure. And the Lord said to Abram, after Lot was separated from him, Lift up thy eyes, and look from the place wherein thou now art, to the north and to the south, to the east and to the west. All the land which thou seest I will give to thee, and to thy seed for ever and I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth. If any man be able to number the dust of the earth, he shall be able to number thy seed also. Arise, and walk through the land in the length and in the breadth thereof, for I will give it to thee. So Abram, removing his tent, came and dwelt by the vale of Mambri, which is in Hebron, and he built there an altar to the Lord. End of chapter 13 Chapter 14 And it came to pass at that time that Amraphel king of Senear, and Arioch king of Pontus, and Coderlehomer king of the Elamites, and Thedal king of nations, made war against Berah king of Sodom, and against Bersa, king of Gomorrah, and against Seneab, king of Adama, and against Semeber, king of Seboim, and against the king of Bela, which is Sigor. All these came together into the woodland vale, which now is the salt sea. For they had served Kodoleomer twelve years, and in the thirteenth year they revolted from him. And in the fourteenth year came Coderleomer and the kings that were with him, and they smote the Rephaim in Astaroth Karnaim, and the Zuzim with them, and the Emim in Save of Kariathiam, and the Corians in the mountains of Seir, even to the plains of Haran, which is in the wilderness. And they returned and came to the fountain of Misphat, the same is Cadez, and they smote all the country of the Amalekites, and the Amorean that dwelt in Asasanthamar. And the king of Sodom, and the king of Gomorrah, and the king of Adama, and the king of Seboim, and the king of Bela, which is Sigor, went out, and they set themselves against them in battle array in the woodland vale. To wit, against Coderleomer, king of the Elamites, and Thedal king of nations, and Amraphel king of Senear, and Arioch king of Pontus, four kings against five. Now the woodland vale had many pits of slime, and the king of Sodom and the king of Gomorrah turned their backs and were overthrown there, and they that remained fled to the mountain. And they took all the substance of the Sodomites and the Gomorrites, and all their victuals, and went their way. And Lot also, the son of Abram's brother, who dwelt in Sodom, and his substance. And behold, one that had escaped told Abram the Hebrew, who dwelt in the vale of Mambre, 
the Amorite, the brother of Eschol, and the brother of Aner, for these had made league with Abram. Which, when Abram had heard, to wit, that his brother Lot was taken, he numbered of the servants born in his house three hundred and eighteen well-appointed, and pursued them to Dan. And dividing his company, he rushed upon them in the night, and defeated them, and pursued them as far as Hobah, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the substance, and lot his brother with his substance, the women also, and the people. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him, after he returned from the slaughter of Kodoleomer, and of the kings that were with him in the vale of Save, which is the king's vale. But Melchizedek, the king of Salem, bringing forth bread and wine, for he was the priest of the Most High God, blessed him, and said, Blessed be Abram by the Most High God, who created heaven and earth, and blessed be the Most High God, by whose protection the enemies are in thy hands. And he gave him the tithes of all. And the king of Sodom said to Abram, Give me the persons, and the rest take to thyself. And he answered him, I lift up my hand to the Lord God, the Most High, the Possessor of heaven and earth, that from the very woof-thread unto the shoe-latchet I will not take of any things that are thine, lest thou say, I have enriched Abram. Except such things as the young men have eaten, and the shares of the men that came with me, Aner, Eskol, and Mambre, these shall take their shares. End of chapter 14 Chapter 15 Now when these things were done, the word of the Lord came to Abram by a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy protector, and thy reward exceeding great. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me? I shall go without children, and the son of the steward of my house is this Damascus Eliezer. And Abram added, But to me thou hast not given seed, and lo, my servant born in my house shall be my heir. And immediately the word of the Lord came to him, saying, He shall not be thy heir but he that shall come out of thy bowels, him shalt thou have for thy heir. And he brought him forth abroad, and said to him, Look up to heaven, and number the stars, if thou canst. And he said to him, So shall thy seed be. Abram believed God, and it was reputed to him unto justice. And he said to him, I am the Lord who brought thee out from Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land, and that thou mightest possess it. But he said, Lord God, whereby may I know that I shall possess it? And the Lord answered and said, Take me a cow of three years old, and a she-goat of three years, and a ram of three years, a turtle also, and a pigeon. And he took all these, and divided them in the midst, and laid the two pieces of each one against the other, but the birds he divided not. And the fowls came down upon the carcasses, and Abram drove them away. And when the sun was setting, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and a great and darksome horror seized upon him. And it was said unto him, Know thou beforehand that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land not their own, and they shall bring them under bondage, and afflict them four hundred years. But I will judge the nation which they shall serve, and after this they shall come out with great substance. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace, and be buried in a good old age but in the fourth generation they shall return hither, for as yet the iniquities of the Amorites are not at the full until this present time. And when the sun was set, 
there arose a dark mist, and there appeared a smoking furnace, and a lamp of fire passing between those divisions. That day God made a covenant with Abram, saying, To thy seed will I give this land, from the river of Egypt even to the great river Euphrates. The Kineans and Kenizzites, the Kedmonites and the Hittites, and the Pharisites, the Raphaim also, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Gergesites, and the Jebusites. End of chapter 15 Chapter 16 Now Sarai, the wife of Abram, had brought forth no children, but having a handmaid, an Egyptian named Agar, she said to her husband, Behold, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. Go in unto my handmaid. It may be I may have children of her at least. And when he agreed to her request, she took Agar the Egyptian, her handmaid, ten years after they first dwelt in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband to wife. And he went in to her, but she, perceiving that she was with child, despised her mistress. And Sarai said to Abram, Thou dost unjustly with me. I gave my handmaid into thy bosom, and she, perceiving herself to be with child, despiseth me. The Lord judge between me and thee. And Abram made answer and said to her, Behold, thy handmaid is in thy own hand. Use her as it pleaseth thee. And when Sarai afflicted her, she ran away. And the angel of the Lord, having found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, which is in the way to Sur in the desert, he said to her, Agar, handmaid of Sarai, whence comest thou, and whither goest thou? And she answered, I flee from the face of Sarai, my mistress. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Return to thy mistress, and humble thyself under her hand. And again he said, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, and it shall not be numbered for multitude. And again, Behold, said he, thou art with child, and thou shalt bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Ishmael, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. He shall be a wild man, his hand will be against all men, and all men's hands against him, and he shall pitch his tents over against all his brethren. And she called the name of the Lord that spoke unto her, Thou the God who hast seen me. For she said, Verily here have I seen the hinder parts of him that seeth me. Therefore she called that well, the well of him that liveth and seeth me. The same is between Cadus and Barad. And Agar brought forth a son to Abram, who called his name Ishmael. Abram was fourscore and six years old when Agar brought him forth Ishmael. End of chapter 16